Mr. Punch presents The Traveller's Gazette, a journey into the history of the British traveller in two parts, compiled by Sue Rodwell and directed by John Tucky. Part one, Travel at Home. Pythias, 310 B.C. The inhabitants of Britain are said to be sprung from the soil and to preserve a primitive style of life. They make use of chariots in war, and their habitations are rough and ready, being for the most part constructed of wattles or logs. They harvest their grain crops by cutting off the ears without the horns and stowing them in covered granges. From these they pull out the oldest and prepare them for food. They are simple in their habits, and far removed from the cunning and knavishness of modern man. Their diet is inexpensive, and quite different from the luxury that is born of wealth. The island is thickly populated, and has an extremely chilly climate. It has many kings and potentates, who live for the most part in a state of mutual peace. Gordia to Prince Philip of Spain, January 1554. I wrote to you from Southampton, but have had no time or place to do so since, so have had to leave it. You will have heard that at Winchester his highness met the queen, who had been waiting for him there two weeks, and also that the wedding ceremonies were a fine sight, for there were six bishops in their pontificals with croziers and mitres, and I have never seen so many at any wedding. The queen is not at all beautiful, small, rather flabby than fat. She is of white complexion and fair, and has no eyebrows. She is a perfect saint and dresses badly. All the women here wear petticoats of coloured cloth without admixture of silk, and above come coloured robes of damask, satin or velvet, very badly cut. Their shoes are sometimes of velvet, but more often of leather, and they wear black stockings and show their legs up to the knee when walking. As their skirts are not long, they are possibly immodest when walking, and even when seated. They are neither beautiful nor graceful when dancing, and their dances only consist in strutting or trotting about. There are no distractions here except eating and drinking, the only variety they understand. The Queen spends over 300,000 ducats a year on her table. There are usually 18 kitchens in full blast, and they seem veritable hells, such is the stir and bustle in them. The palaces here are enormous, for the smallest of the four we have seen is certainly much bigger and has more and larger apartments than the Alcazar of Madrid. But the throng of people is such that they are full to bursting. The usual daily consumption is 80 to 100 sheep, and the sheep here are very big and fat, a dozen and a half calves, without mentioning poultry, game, deer, boars, and great numbers of rabbits. There is plenty of beer here, and they drink more than would fill the Valladolid River. In summer, the ladies and some gentlemen put sugar in their wine, with the result that there are great goings-on in the palace. Celia Fines, January 1685. From Lyme, the ways are difficult by reason of the very steep hills up and down, and that so successively as little or no plain even ground and full of large smooth pebbles that make the strange horses slip and uneasy to go. The horses of the country are accustomed to it and travel well in roads. From Lyne to Burport is 12 miles, and so to Dorchester. Thence to Blandford we pass over Woodbury Hill, thence 18 to Salisbury and 8 mile to Newton Tony. From Newton Tony it's 2 mile more to Stone Age that stands on Salisbury Plain, eminent for many battles being fought there, the many barrow or butts that are thick all over the plain, and this of Stone Age, 
that is reckoned one of the wonders of England. How such prodigious stones should be brought there, no such sort of stone is seen in the country nearer than 20 miles.